Hi everyone, I'm Steve, here with Dr. Nario. As you know, Dr. Nario is with Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. You can check them out online, as I always say, and see what they do. They do a lot of interesting treatments and uh, uh, treat a lot of different things. They're in Reno, Nevada. Uh, so, and if you want to reach out to me, you can get me at stevemain.com if you have questions or comments or leave them in the comment section. Again, if you have uh, questions for the doctor, a lot of people are leaving questions about different things. I always pass those on and he can hopefully get in there and answer those questions for you. So welcome, doctor. Hi, Steve. Thank you for the invite. Happy to be here. Okay, so let's talk about DMSO. Now, again, I'm not the doctor, but that's an interesting IV drip that my wife has done a lot more than me. And I'm not even going to try and pronounce it, but I know that <laughs> I think you can take it different way. So let me just start with what is it? What's DMSO? Right. So, Steve, you're right. Don't even try to pronounce it. Just take it. That's what I tell my patients. It's dimethyl sulfoxide. Uh, again, tongue twister, but DMSO actually is a natural substance that's formed in the atmosphere and it returns to the earth as rainfall. So, I mean, this is just giving you the background. This is not the medicine that we give everybody. So it's a sulfur based compound and it originates as an end product of the sulfur cycle that begins in the ocean. So you would see how natural this is and where it comes from because algaes and phytoplanktons produce sulfur compounds. And again, this actually is what we call the DMS. There's, there's no O yet, and it's a very volatile compound. And when exposed to ozone and high energy UV uh, rays in the atmosphere, DMS now is converted to DMSO, which is water soluble. As now as it's in the atmosphere, as it rains, it now goes to the plants and gets concentrated up to 100 times in these specific uh, specimens. And uh, the one uh, present, um, they're also present in small amounts in fruits, grains, vegetables, and beverages such as milk, uh, making it really a natural product. And all commercially available DMSO are manufactured and they are not natural. Uh, since small amounts are present in plants and making extraction very impractical. It remains an indisputable fact that both molecules are found in nature and therefore are still natural. Uh, it's metabolically converted to, okay, this is pretty famous for everybody. It's called MSM, which is methyl sulfonyl methane. Just let's keep it at MSM uh, within the body. And you would see MSM mostly in commercial cream for wrinkles and even inflammation. Hmm. Okay. So I know a little bit about it. And I think it's used mostly for inflammation. Uh, and you can take it multiple ways, I think. I think you can take it orally. But I know that there at the clinic at Biointegrative, you do this this is quite a common IV um, at the clinic. Uh, so I know that it's done that way. It's one my wife has done and my mother-in-law is, no, my mother-in-law won't do it because of the <laughs> smell, which I think that's the one with the smell, right? It's, it's not a stink, no. but it's, I'm telling you, it is, look, just being honest, it's an obnoxious smell. <laughs> and I can't describe it. I can't tell you what it smells like. Right. All I'd say is it, it again, it, it's weird because it doesn't stink in my opinion, but it's obnoxious. And when my wife gets this drip, it follows her around and it right. gets in the house. It gets everywhere. But <laughs> it's one that she really likes because she gets a lot of benefit from it. So what's it used for and, and so on? Well, Steve. DMSO is both water and fat soluble. Most famous really for the anti-inflammatory effects due to, I go, I go scientific on this one because it's due to a hydrogen bond disruptor. But basically think about of a hydrogen, hydrogen bond disruptor as it lowers down the inflammation by preventing or decreasing oxygen or hydrogen peroxide reactions in the cell in our body. 
So basically, that's the reason why we have inflammation. It's a potent antioxidant and a free radical scavenger. It's also an antimicrobial, antifungal, antibacterial, and antiviral. It increases the sensitivities to pharmaceuticals when used synergistically. So when I mentioned that, we also use this um, for chemo drugs to be stronger. Uh, it it kind of gives them more potency. It also enhances uh, the resistance and um, susceptibility of our bodies against infection. It also is used as a, a, prote a cryoprotection for cells. So when, when we get stem cells to inject to patients, they're all, always bathed in DMSO because it, it preserves the cells as it is. And also DMSO is uh, used to increase transportation of drugs through the br uh, blood-brain barrier or it goes to the brain easier. And it's often used always as well with chemotherapy and high-dose vitamin C and brain cancers and even... Uh, as we use this for, uh, as going back to your question, we use this in any condition that has inflammation, maybe autoimmune conditions, RA, lupus, cancer, strokes, and heart attacks. And for our viewers, the athletes. I use this a lot for athletes who are inflamed from their strenuous workouts or even for the ones suffering from injuries and who has pain. Yeah, great for injury. And I mean, when you reduce inflammation, that has incredible uses and it can benefit your body. And it can lower your blood pressure, right? If inflammation is causing high blood pressure, wouldn't that help lower your blood pressure? That is correct. That is true. It's always yeah. uh, cardiovascular uh, issues like that are always inflammatory based. Right. And so what a huge benefit. And Again, if you're an athlete, you know, you're at playing at the collegiate level or just the recreational sports enthusiast uh, running or whatever, that inflammation is almost always what causes the pain. So uh, this treatment would help reduce that inflammation, which would take the pain away. Am I right? Yes, that is correct, Steve. Okay, so what are the different ways to take this or administer this treatment. I know that um, you do the IV, the drip there, but is, again, like you always do, tell us, I, again, I know that the IV is gonna be the best way to get this in your body and get the most bang for your buck, but how, how do you take it? Well, Steve, um, there, you're right. Um, a while ago, you did mention different modalities and how DMSO is given. Uh, one, orally. Um, again, they're available in different percents. Uh, usually one teaspoon, three times with meals. And it's used for gut inflammation, for example, and even systemic inflammation. Another one would be topical. <clears throat> so this is usually diluted in water for all body parts and extremity uh, areas even the head that has pain or inflammation that needs to be addressed. But as IV, as you mentioned here in, our, in my practice, we actually use it <clears throat> for severe and chronic states, such as cancer, autoimmune, and <clears throat> generalized pain for athletes, even in training. But again, you're right, heads up for everybody who uses this. This is really famous for the side effects. As you mentioned a while ago, even our IV room gets stunk by by DMSO, but I like the smell. No, don't get me wrong. The characteristic odor, as you can describe this, is sulfur, sulfur smelling. That's why it can be correlated to garlic, uh, corn, cream corn, or even old socks. I've heard of that from our patients. Uh, the stronger uh, as it gets into your sy systemic circulation, especially through IV, uh, it, the stronger the smell is. 48 hours uh, within uh, the time of the administration, you will uh, smell this on the patient. And don't even try to rub it off because it's internal and you cannot remove it. And unfortunately, the one who is getting the IV is not going to smell the, the garlicky um, odor. And you'll just notice this when people are starting to run away from you, unfortunately. Yeah, you know, it's the weirdest thing. Like I said, I wouldn't call it a stink, but it does to me, it doesn't smell like garlic or it, 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 but it's an obnoxious smell. And it's so interesting <laughs> that the receiver of this 
IV has no idea they smell like this and it'll definitely uh, damper your social life <laughs> for sure. True. So that is true. Um, but just for 48 hours and it's, it's probably worth it if you need to get inflammation out of your body. So mm -hmm. um, the, the IV drip, we, you kind of talked a little bit about what it's used for. But what combinations could you use this for with other drips to, to just kind of maybe emphasize a little bit, you know, specialize it more for a certain thing? Is there or IVs that you could combine with this? Right. So, Steve, being a famous a natural anti-inflammatory, it can be in, infused um, uh, through IVs, especially if there is a systemic inflammation that you want to address like cancer, autoimmune conditions. And I don't know if you're familiar with this condition. This is used a lot for interstitial cystitis, inflammation of your uh, urinary bladder, uh, especially combined in my practice with um, uh, people who are using peroxide, for example, who are actually sick from a viral illness or infection, and even for healthy athletes. I usually use this with uh, vitamin drips, for example, why is that? Because I remember I mentioned to you a while ago, it enhances chemotherapy when you use it uh, along with DMSO to enter uh, the distribution organ. Same thing for vitamin drip. That's why we add it in there also to enhance the absorption and distribution of the vitamins for, for our patients. Wow. Okay. Um, a great drip, great information. Uh, this is a good one to know about. And again, I know that you have other very fascinating treatments like this, which are just a simple IV that do all kinds of different things, depending on what the protocol is for the needs or the goals or even desires of someone who may come in uh, like me to uh, get an IV. So thanks for your time, doctor. Uh, great information. We really appreciate it. That's Dr. Nario. Biointegrative Health Center in Reno, Nevada. Thanks for being with us. Well, Steve, thank you again. As we all know, the knowledge is power, and thank you for letting me provide you with the edge in longevity and health maintenance, which I call the biological edge or the bio edge. <laughs> <laughs>